Hello, it is Friday, and I thought that I would do a little bit of a weekend vlog. We are actually getting ready to go out to dinner uh, with some friends, so I actually look like a semi <laughs> pulled together human. Um, so that should be fun. <laughs> return library a library book so I did that and while I was there I got some other books that I had been keeping an eye out for and then I also ran to Walmart to get stuff to make chili for dinner tonight and then I'm gonna make scones in the morning um, and I thought that I would do a little bit of a haul so most of the stuff from Walmart was groceries, although I did buy this really cute dress. Um, and it was $19, I think, $19.99. But look at how cute it is. Like, I love a ruffle, I love like, this shade of pink with either orange or red is my jam. It has um, straps on it. So yeah, it was $19.98, which I thought was super cute. And it's funny that it has these little tie straps because the other thing that I specifically um, wanted to get today when I went to Walmart was ribbon because I thrifted this jumpsuit um, like a few weeks ago and it is really really cute it's got like a wide cropped leg I love this little cutout detail it's adorable but the top is too big so I mean there is elastic in the back and I guess I didn't really think of that like I could perhaps put more elastic in it to make it a little bit tighter or I should say have someone put elastic in it because I don't know how to do that um, but it's really cute and I don't know if you can tell that the stripes are kind of neon so it's like a navy blue and it has neon green and orange and I got this ribbon because I love a neon situation and I was just going to add um, like ribbon straps to it to tie like this. So I picked up some ribbon and I got some needles and some black thread. Hopefully I can do this in a way, I'm hoping I can just like stitch it into the elastic and then it has like these um, this trim up here. It's really well made and it has the like it was brand new. I don't know where main strip is from, but it retailed for $43.99 and I bought it for $8. So, um, so I picked up this ribbon and assorted things from Walmart so that I could do that this weekend. And then I also bought some new nails. I really like these LA Color um, like glue on nails. They're just like basic colors. I think they're only like $3 maybe, but I like them because you don't get a lot 
um, which is kind of my other thing with like press on nails is that, I mean, it's good. They have to give you a, a variety, but then it always feels so wasteful because you can only wear the ones that fit you. Um, so you get 12 nail tips and a glue and I think it's like $3. And the other thing that I really love about these is that the, I have pretty like small or shallow, I don't know what the like technical term is for it, but like I have small nail beds. And so, um, a lot of times buying, um, like glue on or press on nails is really difficult because I ha I basically have um, like four fingers that are the same, like the nail bed is the same size and I never have enough nails to like work with them. But because these seem to be a little bit smaller, they just really work really well on my nails. So that is my little walmart haul and i am going to grab my library bag um they had some things that i had been looking for for a while so i've been wanting to read arsenic and adobo um since it came out and it is i guess kind of like a cozy mystery um this was book one in the series and i didn't even know that book two had been released and then uh, today when I went for the first time, like, I think I've tried to request this book like three or four times and the whole time has been really long. It's never been on the shelf when I've actually been there. Um, so I'm really super excited to read this. The main character I believe is Latina. I'm sorry. I'm, I was trying to see if it Said. but yeah so I got both of these um this I believe is an indie romance but it is a book that has been on my TBR for a while and I've heard nothing but good things about it the fine print I think it's like a know if it's like an enemies to lover I know there's like a, a billionaire that falls in love with the secretary so um yeah it take I guess the family owns like a, a Disney-esque style theme park so that I picked up um this is a nonfiction, and I have been wanting to read this ever since I learned about it, but it is The Science of Murder, The Forensics of Agatha Christie. It says, The Science of Murder examines the use of fingerprints, firearms, handwriting, blood, blood spatter analysis, toxicology, and more in Christie's beloved works. Um, so yeah, that looks really interesting. Um, and let's see what else did I get the rest? Oh, and then I also got, um, Unmasked, My Life Solving America's Cold Cases by Paul Holes. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Um, he basically broke the case of the Golden State Killer if you like follow anything about true crime, which I haven't really been following that much. My whole, there's been like really a shift in my relationship and like how I feel about true crime and whatever. But anyway, uh, this has been on my list to read as well. And it was available on the um, seven day read shelf and I think everything else I got is YA which is really different for me because I don't read a lot of YA I think I'm pretty far aged out of uh the age group that finds it like enjoyable or plausible or anything but last year I read Cinderella is Dead and I did actually really enjoy it um you know there were a couple things that I 
kind of rolled my eyes at a bit and that's because I'm like I'm an old person so I realize that these books are not meant for me but uh Cinderella is Dead was sort of a um like a retelling of Cinderella in that story the Cinderella character is a young black lesbian and um there's like magic and overthrowing of the kingdom which sort of represents taking down the patriarchy I mean I think it was I mean it was an enjoyable read um and this is the next book by the same author called The Poison Heart or I'm sorry This Poison Heart um yeah like this tape is coming off so I'm assuming that this may be something like um either Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty it's got to be some sort of fairy tale retelling um but yeah I'm I'm interested to see how it turns out and honestly like look at that cover I don't know if you can see it because of the glare but there it is stunning um so I'm excited to actually to read that um the other thing that I got which also got me because hello cover look at that are you kidding me um House of Hollow, which is also another like YA. I can't remember why I wanted to read this. I mean, it was on my list before I saw the the artwork for the cover. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like a magical fairy tale esque kind of story. And I actually have a friend who has already read this and she said she thought that I would enjoy it. So excited to read that as well. Um, and then I got this book by the same author because once again, I thought the cover was really pretty. The covers are getting me right now. Um, I, and I guess it's basically about a girl. It says that she has Ever since Esther's grandfather met death, her entire family has been cursed to suffer one great fear in their lifetime, a fear that will eventually lead each and every one of them to their graves. So it sounds kind of dark, but then the bottom part of the blurb says the author of the critically acclaimed Our Chemical Hearts returns with another hilarious and heartbreaking love story for the ages. So I don't know. We'll we'll see if it's hilarious and heartbreaking. Um, and then okay, this is the last YA book I got: The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I've heard lots of good things about this. I actually, um, I think I started listening to the audio book maybe, and then I had to return it before I could finish it. Um, but the short amount that I listened to, I enjoyed, and I just happened to be like walking past. Um, they had various like displays set up for different reasons, and I just happened to be walking past the one that had this sort of featured, and it caught my eye because I had been wanting to read it. Um, this one is For the Love of the Bard by Jessica Martin, and this is like an enemies to lovers sort of romance. A girl returns to her town and kind of gets roped into producing um, the show for the annual Shakespeare um, Festival, and uh, one, the, one of the guys, I guess, who's working like this a stage hand or whatever is the boy that broke her heart in high school um oh i totally forgot about these and then i got two more cozy mysteries um i had never heard of them but the titles got me and i'm always a sucker 
for books, especially mysteries about people who own <laughs> bookshops. Um, so this is Plaid and Plagiarism, which, come on, like that title. Um, the Highland Bookshop Mystery Series Book 1, and then I got Scones and Scoundrels. I'm actually making scones tomorrow. Um, and this is book two in the series. There are four of them, but I only got two in case it wasn't really my thing. Um, but yeah, it looks like four Americans have moved to Scotland and bought a bookshop. And then like a murder happens right after they arrive and I guess they're pretty much drawn into the mystery of it all. So those are the things that I picked up from the library. Um, we do not have a lot of plans this weekend. Well, we do have friends coming over uh, for dinner and swimming on Sunday, but we had decided that we would kind of have a relaxing weekend because we did a lot last weekend and it was very, very like hectic and busy and whatever. Um, I am currently trying to finish, I actually have two books that I'm trying to finish now. One is uh, the 12 week year, get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months. I don't know if that's gonna work for me because I'm kind of a slacker, but I'm looking to, to get better at doing my work. I'm really, I'm really trying to find ways to implement things to help me be more productive. There are a lot of things that I would like to accomplish and I know that I need to plan them out and figure out a way to get them done. And I'm just not exactly sure how to do that. And I, there's part of me that's really cynical about, I don't know if cynical is the right word. A, I would say a little hesitant to read like self-help books and productivity books. They're, they always seem to be based in a little bit of privilege, uh, of, you know, a touch of ableism. Like, um, you know, they're assuming that everyone, in, and there's like some heavy emphasis of capitalism that I'm not exactly sure how I feel about because... It is what it is, but I'm trying to read it with an open mind. Um, and then the other book that I am reading is The Reunion, a novel by Guillem, Guillem Musso. Did I say I probably said that completely wrong? Um, this is a translation. The original is French, um, and it really is about... Um, a group of friends who are returning to their school uh, 25 years ago and there was like a murder that happened back then. I don't know if uh, people know that it was a, a murder or not. There was a young girl who ran away from the school. It was a boarding school who ran away from the school with one of their teachers and she was never seen again. So I think the sort of prevailing thought has been that they ran off, you know, they ran off together and have lived possibly happily ever after, ever since, I don't know. Um, but it says that her best friends um, haven't spoken since graduation, but when they received notice from their old school de detailing plans for a new gymnasium and inviting them to a class reunion, they know they must go back one more time because there is a body buried in the gym walls and they're the ones who put it there. What really happened that long ago winter night, now nothing stands in the way of truth. Um... So yeah, it says the reunion is a taut and suspenseful thriller that will keep readers riveted until its last haunting final page. And I am, did I lose my bookmark? Tell me I didn't, no. I'm 33 pages in, so I don't really have any thoughts about it so far where I, I think they've introduced um, 
three of the friend, like really only one sort of in depth and that friend um, has been living in New York since he left school and he comes back and we're sort of in his head and then we meet two other classmates but not but more on like a surface level just in that they've interacted um so i definitely want to finish this this weekend i have not read any books all month and i don't know what my problem is i haven't been able to focus on much of anything. I think my anxiety is really high and when it's really high, it's really hard for me to concentrate. Um, so yeah, reading this weekend and writing this weekend. I'm, yeah, I'm on the Camp Nano struggle bus. Okay, I wanted to give a quick update before I ended the vlog. I did actually end up finishing um, House of Hollow. I gave it four stars. The author is Crystal Sutherland. It is, um, briefly, it is about three sisters, Gray, Viv, and Iris. Um, Iris is the youngest. She is still in high school. Um, I believe Gray is maybe like in her mid-20s and Iris is maybe in her early 20s, somewhere around there. Um, they, all three of the sisters disappeared when they were young. I believe um, Iris was maybe like three or four when it happened. And yeah, so maybe Gray's not that old because I think she was like eight. So um, they are out with their parents on New Year's Eve and all three of them disappear. They are found a month later, uh, very close to where they disappeared, um, but completely unharmed. So that disappearance really, as it would, kind of has, you know, the aftershocks of that is really deeply felt in their family. They end up losing their father um, and their mother becomes like much more uh, paranoid and kind of hyper vigilant. The two older girls end up uh, dropping out of high school and leaving while, while they are still teenagers, leaving uh, Iris alone with their mother in the house that they grew up in. Um, Gray goes missing, Bib and Iris um, kind of set out to find her. It's very, um, so I guess technically it is horror. Um, it is kind of set in modern day. I believe it it's in England. Um, I think when the book takes, takes place, they're kind of in London, um, in and around London. There are some witchy elements. All three of the sisters believe that they have some powers um, outside of themselves that kind of helps them um, affect other people's behavior. They're also closely tied to each other. And one of the reasons that they don't believe Gray is dead after she goes missing is because they can both still feel her um, in some kind of way. So it gives me very much, it's very atmospheric. Um, in terms of atmosphere, it reminded me a lot of Mexican Gothic, if you like that kind of almost claustrophobic storytelling. It also gave me, um, in terms of like the vibe of the story, not really the setting, but if you watched season one of True Detective on HBO, the season with Woody Harrelson in it, um, who's the other guy? I can't remember, but even though that takes place in uh, Louisiana, and I believe maybe in the 80s, I can't remember, but that sort of line between reality and almost like fever, dreamish, what is real, um, I felt very much in this book. Um, there was a little bit of humor. They, along the way, 
meet Gray's boyfriend who is a male supermodel named Tyler and he sort of teams up with the two sisters to search for his girlfriend and I think um, the addition of Tyler adds a little bit of humor and a little bit of humanity into the story. I think one of the things I appreciated is that when you <clears throat> read books where characters are sort of like on this journey or like on this mission to accomplish something or find something, um, that they can be so focused on what the end goal is that the connections to the other characters don't really seem very deep. And um, I think Tyler added um, a different voice, a different energy, even though he was kind of gender fluid in his gender expression. I think having that other, like a different focus of energy was really good. Um, so yeah, I ended up giving this four stars. I really liked it. And even though it was horror, it wasn't like scary. There is a little bit of like gore and like talk of like rotting flesh and that sort of thing. So if that's not really your thing, you might want to avoid this. But overall, it was an enjoyable read. I think I read it in practically one day. Um, and I mean, this cover is absolutely beautiful. So yeah, that is all that I have for you today. If you enjoyed the vlog, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribed and I will see you in my next one.